I was going to do a super annoying intro what to replicate mean? what's about to happen to Windows 7. Oh. <laughs> but, um, yeah, do you remember you remember this one, Paul? I, I, I know you already do, but it's a rhetorical question. The little pop-ups that used to show up on Windows XP saying, hey, 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 you. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> <laughs> How about you upgrade? Yeah. I don't, I think I sent this to you, but I wanted to write like a, you know, I, we talk about doing like a joke mm. version of the site, which we'd call it. <laughs> no, um, oh, that, uh, <laughs> I'm going to bleep that one out. <laughs> um, I'm just kidding. We'd call it. <laughs> so anyway, um, <laughs> where all You're we would do is do like extra make, work. Yep. I, we often talk about making a joke version of the mm. site where, you know, we just have like onion style headlines and articles and, mm -hmm. What I would imagine is the interview with the guy who wrote the blog, the blog post whose name now escapes me and me asking him how after all the awfulness of all the nag stuff that they did and the forced upgrades that came out of it and mm -hmm. all the bad PR and everything, like how could Microsoft possibly be doing this again? And then he would reply, Paul, it's like riding a bike. And here they are again. And so uh, basically Microsoft's yeah. reintroducing the nag screens into Windows 7 starting next month, although they claim you will be able to click a button and turn them off forever. And so Yeah, I mean, that, and that's the big difference, right? I yeah. mean, so good for them for learning some lesson from mm -hmm. that debacle. Um, that's fine. Yeah, well, we'll we'll see if it works. I mean, that's yeah. yeah. I mean, <laughs> um, there have been some uh, inadvertent issues in the past with turning those things off for mm -hmm. sure. Um, but you know, I look, Microsoft is extending support for people or for companies that want to pay for it. Um, uh, but for the majority of people out there in the world, individuals, small businesses and so forth, mm -hmm. windows, you know, seven is, is crashing to a halt here. I mean, it's, yeah. it's 10, 10 months, 10, 10 months, nine months, Something whatever like January of 2020. So, uh, yeah. So 10 months, I guess, um, you know, if you're still running windows seven, you're going to have to figure this out now. They're not offering any kind of free upgrade uh, to Windows 10 now, which you know I'm a little curious about. But it's it probably is because they know from telemetry that most of the machines out there aren't adequate for Windows 10 anyway. That maybe the right approach is to just get another computer. Yeah, I mean, if you if you've been holding out, now's not a bad time. Yeah, yeah, lots lots of good choices. All of them running, I don't know. If your computer, if you bought your computer with Windows 7 and it's I know, 7 to 10 years old, it doesn't matter it's what time. you buy as long as it's an Intel i5 or whatever, you're mm -hmm. going to notice a lightning speed improvement over what you have. Yeah, and, and you'll benefit. I mean, look, there are downsides to Windows 10 for sure. But, it, it, but all of the joking aside or all of the complaints aside about some of the updating stuff, one of the like absolute best things about Windows 10 is you bring it up for the first time. Mm-hmm. You check for updates, and there there's probably going to be a cumulative update that is, um, you know, for the most recent month, and it includes all the updates that came before it. Mm -hmm. You might have a couple of small things like a Defender update, maybe a driver update or two, and maybe a you know like an Adobe security update or something like that. But that's it. Yeah. You, there's no multiple rebooting. There's no 87 downloads waiting all queued up and have to be installed in some special order. Um, they really. They really have done a, a nice job with that kind of thing, and and, yeah. and you'll appreciate that. Yeah, and the saying. other really nice thing too is if you have multiple machines and you set up your your start, you know, your start menu and your taskbar on one machine how you like it, yeah. you have to do it on every other machine because it won't sync those settings. Because why? Why would? Right. Why, yeah. Right. Yeah, I, I it, it's <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's not all roses and wine, yeah. but um, you know. <laughs> it is it's Windows better. Look, it is better. Outside. Even I was even thinking, you know, this is just a goofy little thing. Um, you have an image on your display behind you of the Windows Seven backdrop. Mm -hmm. You're using a technology that's built into Windows Ten to do this. Yeah. That's not in Windows Seven. Doesn't yeah. mean there isn't. I'm sure that. Uh, well, I'm not sure, but it's probable that Windows Media Player and Windows mm -hmm. Seven supports some kind of Miracast, like casting to an external screen kind of uh, compatibility. I don't know, whatever. But. This is just part of Windows 10 now. You yeah, know? that's yeah, that one is true. Of, like, I mean, there, it's much better on the Windows 10 side than 7. I, I'm yeah. not going to argue that. I just really wish it would sync my settings. But, um, you know, we can it dream of... It is arbitrary what it syncs, yes. We can yeah. dream of 2012 fondly. Um. Not that we should get off into a, an extended rant about Windows 10, but tied to what the issue you're mentioning is mm. 
when you do a version upgrade, which you do every time, like twice a year when you install a feature update, it also reverts some unknown number of settings to their defaults, yep. right? So, for example, if you, I use Notepad a lot, and I save no, you know, text files to the desktop. Mm -hmm. I use Paint a lot, and I save those images to the desktop. When you install a feature update, which is a version upgrade, uh, the next time you go to save a document, uh, Notepad will be pointed at the Documents folder, and Paint will be pointed at Pictures. And it's like I that's and I can't tell you how many times I've inadvertently saved something to a place I never look because that happens, you mm -hmm. know, so this this you know, it, look, it's not perfect, but it's still I mean, uh, Windows 7 is so far removed from my mind right now. I couldn't come up with a good list, but the list of problems with Windows 7 is much bigger. And it oh, yeah. really starts with that thing I talked about up front that. Uh, God help you if you ever try to bring up a Windows 7 computer today fresh, uh, which, by the way, would be really hard to do because it doesn't have PC reset built in, mm. right? Um, you would have an unbelievable number of updates to install. Like, it's unbelievable. Yeah. Speaking yeah. of updates, uh, <sighs> there's a new thing that just showed up randomly on a mm -hmm. Microsoft support page. It showed up on March 11th, which would be yesterday. It says, hey, if you try to install an update and it reboots and your update f and the, the boot fails... Okay. It will now automatically roll back that update, oh, which is great. I mean, that that's a Common really good sense. It, yeah, it, it only took us why so I don't know why it no. took so long for that to happen, but that's actually a pretty big deal, especially for like large shops that have just a random computer that just doesn't update, and then now rather than the person coming into a black box that doesn't boot, it'll just right. be the old old version. So. I just checked on this computer because I went one goofy issue I have here. It's an HP computer. So HP, like all of the major PC makers, has its own utility for installing uh, driver updates, BIOSes, mm -hmm. uh, getting support, yada, 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 whatever. And um, <laughs> it, it, one really goofy issue I have on this computer is the HP support app, which is called, I think, HP support, will find newer versions of two of the drivers. One of them is graphics because it's integrated graphics. And the other one is possibly wireless LAN. I don't remember. Um, and then <laughs> when I go to Windows Update, it wants mm -hmm. to install those uh, drivers again. And if you click through, it says, these are older than the ones on your computer. Are you sure you want them? Now, your initial response to that would be, no, I don't want those. But if I, if I don't install the older ones, mm -hmm. I'll wake up in the morning, I'll hit the key on the you know, keyboard to bring the computer up to life, and it won't come on. Like, it's on, but the screen won't come on. And so I literally have to hold down the power button. You know what I mean? Like, this, yeah. is, this, is, this is Windows. Like... I don't know. So, you know, Microsoft, or, uh, I should say Windows 10 hasn't solved all of the problems. Mm -hmm. um, it's still better. It's still better. It's uh, interesting. Something I'm actually pretty excited about here, Paul. Mm -hmm. Pretty excited about, and I think they just saved my subscription, to be honest, is uh, if you have Spotify Premium, a personal account now, you now get yeah. Hulu for free. The, the, yeah, ad supported Hulu. The 5 or seven ninety nine version. Um, yeah. Which is, I looked at that because I pay for Hulu, but so I, I pay for the version without ads. So do I. But so what? So what is it? Okay, yeah. Talk but to me. the reason why is I can almost guarantee that when the Disney version whatever comes out, mm -hmm. we would have dropped Hulu altogether and just paid for the Disney because my kid will get exponential more value out of a Disney streaming right, service right. than Hulu. Yep. And so what's gonna? I can guarantee what's gonna happen is, um, well, I'm gonna do this anyways. My wife can watch a few ads. I don't care. <laughs> I can save 10 bucks a month or 12 bucks a nice. month or whatever it is, is that now we'll have all three, but only yeah. pay for really kind of two. So that yeah. I, I'm actually pretty excited about that. Yeah. I think if I was doing extreme penny pinching, I would probably subscribe one month at a time to, to one service and oh, then sure. kind of rotate it out. You know, I think I, it's weird cause I still kind of think about this, like, um, uh, game of Thrones is coming back. Right. Mm -hmm. So, there's no way I'm going to go back and watch every episode of Game of Thrones. But the New York Times, uh, it, it's goofy that they do this. But actually, in this case, I, I find it kind of useful. Like, they've been publishing an article for each season and saying, look, if you want to kind of binge the key episodes, these are the ones to watch. So an episode or a season one, maybe there are three of them or whatever. And I was like, okay, so I could watch two to five, four or five or whatever episodes per season uh, and then kind of catch up that way. That's doable. Like, I could do that because I think it's coming back in April. But then it becomes like, okay, so, but then you have to pay for HBO. Mm -hmm. And it's like, we have to, like, if we're going to do this, like, we need, to, my wife and I, I mean, we have to pretty much agree, like, we're going to just watch Game of Thrones. Yeah. 
and we're going to plow through this thing. And I think I'm going to wait till April starts because that way I can let the new shows kind of pile up mm-hmm. as the weeks go by. See, I'm kind of in the same boat as I want to. I've never watched. I've minus on a plane. I really yeah. want to watch the series uh, Silicon Valley. I fear yeah. that it's really good and all that, but it's on HBO yeah. and it's. I, I'm the same boat. I don't. Yep. I, I, I'm too cheap and lazy to go <laughs> sign up. You have for to it. dedicate. Like I'm going to do this. Like yeah. You know, like we signed up for Showtime. It was actually free for the first month. Mm-hmm. And we just wanted to watch the most recent season of Homeland because we'd seen the rest of it. And we plowed through it in a week and it was awful. I hated it. But um, but it was nice not having to pay for it. Like I don't think I'm going to get away with that on HBO because it's just going to be too much stuff. Plus there's other shows. Like you said, like I don't know. It Maybe you can just like say for like the next two months we're just going to do this. Like what know? we need to do is like me, you, Mary, Joe. We need to get into like a <laughs> rotating pool of yes. sharing usernames. Oh, jeez. Yes, Brad. Let's <laughs> like, Mar- the like Mary Joe gets – uh, every see. third month of HBO, you get every third month mm-hmm. of Netflix, and I get whatever Hulu and well, just. I can already tell you what the weak link in this plan is. It's Mary Jo because she doesn't watch a lot of TV. Yeah, actually, it's, I'm probably a weak link too because I don't watch TV either. It's my wife. So. We actually, I mean, we, my wife and I don't really fight that much, but and and this is not a fight, but mm-hmm. some of our more uncomfortable moments literally are like last night where we're like, okay, we got to find a show to watch. It's like we've already watched all the good stuff. Like we plowed through <clears throat> all of the best shows. And it's like, uh, you know, so we start watching this Australian political. Blah, oh, yeah. And, yeah. And like 15 minutes into it, I'm like, I'm not doing this. I I, I just could. Seriously. Mm. It, this the Australian, the, 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 <laughs> the intricacies of the Australian government are as foreign to me is that made up land in Africa that Black Panther is from. Like it is nonsense <laughs> to all of our like, australian listeners yep. i do apologize yep. for the baboon on the podcast who is yep. now belittling no, like your government of, and way of of buildings that are probably very familiar to, we literally this is how ignorant we are brad let me i'll i will even i will not step back from the cliff i will swan dive onto the cliff <laughs> <laughs> when i paused the show my wife said i don't know i, I she goes i don't think it's that bad i said really so what's the capital of australia She's like, I don't, I don't know. And I said, if I told you what it was and you didn't recognize the name, could we watch something else? And she said, yeah. And I said, it's Canberra. And she says, I have never heard of that. And I said, I know. <laughs> yeah, because most people would say Sydney or Yeah, one or of Melbourne the places you've heard of, or Brisbane, Brisbane or even, you know. She's like, I've heard of Perth. I'm like, Perth is on Perth, the other, other side, side of the continent. It is Maybe the only thing on the other side of the continent. I'm not really sure. I've not been there, but I've been to Australia. Very nice people. Good place to. Visit. Oh, I, I am dying to go to Australia. I, please do I've been die. To New that would make my life. Easier. Yeah, please do die. Yeah. <laughs> like right, it will be like a scene from Lost. I'll end up in some you know fantasy version of Australia. I would be very happy if you just got left in Perth. <laughs> and uh... <laughs> yep, that would be a good TV show, though. You know, Paul makes his way back from Perth slowly. <laughs> yes, we. The problem is between Perth and probably the airport you need to get to, which would be in Sydney. So right. Like, it's about, a, what, 1,500 miles or something. It's got maybe more. And I don't, and, and I don't think there's a whole lot there. I don't think there is either. I think, you know, the vast majority of the interior of the country is pretty much a desert, right? It's Yeah, it's just uh, everything I know about that part of the country of Australia is orange dirt. Yeah. I don't mean to insult Australia. I'm, like I said, I You've am dying. done a dying good job of it, go, let me I'm tell you. dying to go to Australia. I, and I... <laughs> I know some Austra- I know Strat- my friend uh, John lived in Australia for several mm-hmm. years. Like we talk about doing this all the time. I I'd love to go to Australia, but it's one of the few places I've been that you have not. Yeah, yeah. I did make it to New Zealand. Yeah, I've, um, ne- I've never never been to the Zealand. Beautiful, beautiful place. Unlike Australia. <laughs> yeah, unlike that. Hit. <laughs> <laughs> no, Australia is obviously awesome. I just have not experienced it for well, myself. This is- this show started with such promise, and then we ended up with uh, offending yeah, people. Yeah, I just always, I always just drive it right over the edge. I don't yeah. know why. Yeah, the Australian cliffs, which are beautiful, by the way. I'm sure they're gorgeous. <laughs> what a view! You can go whale watching. Yeah, sure. From that, from the the cliffs. Bondi Beach. What is it? Oh, what's that <laughs> hike that we did from Bondi to Coogee, I think Beach. Wonderful, mm-hmm. wonderful little right. hike. My wife and I took. It took a very sketchy kind of cab ride to get there, but it was it was nice. I think like Canberra is like the Albany, New York of Australia. You know, it's like nobody <laughs> suspects that it's the capital. Well, you know, it's good for war, right? If you get attacked, they're not going to 
It is. It's it's inland, unlike all the other cities. The big mm. cities are all seem like they're right on the water. Yeah. All right. You got anything else before <laughs> we uh, drive this this canoe right over the waterfall? Uh, no. I uh, Corel Draw Graphics Suite 2019 is out today. It's on the Mac. Also, they have a web app that they're going to turn into a PWA. That's kind hmm. of interesting. Um. And then I, I don't do a lot of printer reviews, although I did just review a, a, an HP Tango printer, which uses like a smart app. Um, and uh, now they're they're updating their office jet all in ones, which is like printing, scanning, copying to incorporate this kind of stuff. So you can print from a smartphone. That you, everything works off of a mobile app. If you're using Windows or the Mac, um, you can configure everything through an app that uh, you get from the store. And it's like the simplest, nicest thing in the world. Like if you've ever... Try to configure a window, you know, a printer in Windows. You understand mm -hmm. what a what a nightmare that can be, and the crazy convoluted dialogues. And uh, this thing has like a little touch screen on it, and works with apps and so It's it's actually pretty amazing. So you should check that out if you're if you need a printer. And they're they're not expensive. That's the other thing. I mean, mm -hmm. I distinctly remember when I started writing. We bought an HP LaserJet actually, and it was it had to have been like fifteen hundred dollars. It was a huge expense, but we especially back you know when that twenty years ago, but. We knew we'd be printing a lot. We had, you know, we needed it, whatever. And, um, you know, the new, the, the one I'm reviewing, I think is $400. I mean, are you kidding me? It's, and the thing is yeah. like, it like, it spits pages out. Like it's violently hurling them at you. Like the, <laughs> the snow, I'm serious. Like I, I actually printed something just to show my wife. I'm like, you got to see this. I have never seen outside of like a commercial print house, mm -hmm. something, anything print this fast. It, it like, it's like a machine gun of paper coming out of the front of this thing. It's amazing. I know it's a printer, but it is, it's amazing. I'm happy How about you, you are... Brad. What else is going on? Do you have any uh, printer stories you'd like to share? I don't, I was actually, I don't know if I own a printer. Oh, wow. Yeah. I think when I, yeah, I usually just send it to my brother, but I mean, I print things. I sent it to my brother. Well, he lives like right. Down uh, the do street. you also use his Netflix account, Brad? Is this how your life works? What do you call this? Not the gig economy, but the sharing economy. The sharing economy. I will tell yes, you that. that I do steal his beer. Uh, I used to steal it from him when I was in high school, and I still do now as an adult. Although it's more it's of just... He lives around the block. Like if I'm walking It's by, important a... to preserve traditions. Yeah, he has a fridge like... in his garage, and it's always filled with good stuff. And who it's am always, I? To... It's always curiously unlocked. And so yeah, I mean, <laughs> sure. I mean, all you got to do is punch in the passcode. It opens the garage door, and you just walk into his garage. <laughs> So I, I probably I, I won't I'll, I, this won't ruin this because there's no way my brother-in-law will ever know about this podcast. But uh, my brother-in-law put in a a TV in his living room and he hung it on the wall. And below it, there's a like a power receptacle, right, with two power ports. Mm -hmm. And there's a cable coming down for the TV that plugs in the wall. Now this guy's worked at lighting companies entire life. He knows all about electricity. He he could fix this himself. Every time I go over there, I'm like, dude, you got to put the power port up behind the thing. And he goes, yeah, I'm not going to do that. I don't care. I'm like, no. <laughs> It looks terrible. You got it. You got to fix it. So this has gone on a couple of times. Last time I went over, he had like this thing hanging over the power receptacle that was like one of those fake fireplaces. Mm -hmm. But you can still see the cable going down. <laughs> I'm like, that doesn't fix the problem. And why would you put that on your wall? And he's like, I don't. Know, I thought you would just shut up about it. And I'm like, no. I, so <laughs> when they go on vacation in June, <laughs> I'm gonna hire an electrician and I'm gonna move that thing <laughs> up behind his TV. Like I'm literally gonna do this to him. And just see if he notices it. Well, we wish you well on your breaking and entering um, <laughs> upcoming. Oh, I have the code to his garage. It's all set. We're good. Okay, good. good. <clears throat> yeah. Well, at least we agree on one thing. If you have the code to the garage, that means you can come up and come over at also any time. Also has a, as does have a fridge full of beer. Now okay. that you mention it. There you go. Mm -hmm. There you go. All right, folks, so that wraps it up today on our Australian hating episode and Windows hating <laughs> episode of First Drink Daily. Uh, you can find Paul on the internet at Throughout on Twitter for all your uh, down under jokes. And uh, yeah. Yep. 